What's up everyone and welcome back into another interesting video on custom rooms after a long time so sorry guys for not posting videos for a while I was busy these few days working on other stuffs but from now on I'll try to keep myself consistent to upload regular videos so keeping everything aside today I'll be reviewing the superior OS extender on my Poco X4 Pro and I'll be talking about everything so make sure to watch the video till the end and now let's get the video started. So firstly starting with the software so it comes on Android 13 security patch of 1st November and for the kernel it comes on the stock kernel and before we move further I hope that you have probably noticed my name on the maintainers tab because I'll be maintaining this room from now on. Yes I was busy these days in learning this room stuffs and I've also released another room which I'll be covering on another video. So to get it make sure to sub to our channel for the latest updates. Now talking about the launchers, so this room comes on the superior launchers. So firstly when you will move into the wallpapers and style settings, you can change the wallpapers from this tab and you get a lot of superior OS extended exclusive wallpapers here. And now moving back, you also get various theming styles for your system and you also get features like themed icons. So when we apply it, as you can see that the apps get themed in Monet style and looks interesting. And now moving back, you can also change the app grid size from this option. Moving into the home settings, you get a lot of customizations for various parts of the launcher like firstly moving into the icons tab, you can control the font size and even the icon size for your app icons. And even you get an option for force themed icons for those apps which don't have any themed icons. Now when we move into this tab, we can change the app icon pack from here like if I select this Linux icon pack. You can see that the app icons get changed in my home screen and even in the app drawer. Moving back, you also get a lot of features for your home screen like wallpaper scrolling, hot seat background like if I enable this and move into the home screen, a background gets applied for the app dock. In fact, you also get some features for your quick space and even you can customize the search bar like controlling the corner radius from here. Apart from this, you also get some features for your recent menu tab like you can directly check out the memory info from here and even you can control the background opacity and you get a lot of other features too like shake to clear feature which clears all the apps in your RAM when you shake your phone in the recent menu. Now you also get some miscellaneous features like you can hide your apps from here which a lot of people require so yeah, that's all for the launcher features. Talking about the pre-installed apps, so as this is a Google Apps build, so you get the Google Play Store pre-installed which works fine and even you get the modded dialer application by which you can record calls without any call announcements, so yeah, that's good for you. Moreover, you also get the MIUI camera pre-installed which works fine and you can take videos up to 1080p 30fps. Now talking about the features and customizations of this room, so here comes the main twist. So when we move into the settings, as you can see the interface it looks really nice and even when you click on this tab it looks great. Now moving back when you will move into this tab called superior lab as you can clearly see that you get a lot of features I mean bunch of features for your whole system UI like firstly moving to the themes tab you can customize your UI style like right now I've set mine one on the default and now if I select this shishu night style you can see the wallpapers on the settings background which looks really great but I personally use the default style for better battery back. Moving back you also get controls for Monet engine from here like customizing the luminance and chroma factor and even you get features like tint background. Other than that you also get a big variety of lock screen font styles like if I select this style and check out my lock screen the clock pattern gets changed. Even you also get a variety of body fonts for your whole system and you can also customize the system icon pack from this option like if I select this plumpy icon pack the system icon gets totally changed and even the nav bar style. Moving back you also get variety of data, signal and Wi-Fi icons but still it's not finished here. Apart from this you also get customizations for your app icon shape. And moving back, you also get various brightness slider styles like right now I've set mine one on the default which looks okayish but when I select this thumb slider style, 
as you can see the slider gets changed on my QS panel. Even you get a lot of navbar styles like currently I'm using this default style and now after I select this nexus style the navbar pattern gets changed. Now moving into the status bar settings you can change the clock background chip like if I select the outline style you can clearly see that the style gets applied. Moving down you also get customizations for your battery style like right now I'm on the iOS 14 landscape style and other than that you also get a lot of other options too. In fact you also get some miscellaneous features for your battery icon like firstly if I put my phone on charge you can see the charging icon on the status bar and you can also change the charging icons from here according to your choice. Apart from this you can also customize the charging color and even you can add gradient effect to your battery bar like right now I have set this type of color pattern which looks really fine and now if I select yellow and violet color for my battery bar you get this kind of gradient pattern which looks really nice. Moving back you also get features like battery bar like when you enable it you can see the battery bar occurs like this on the status bar and even you can customize its thickness, color and you get this type of charging animation while charging your phone. Other than that you also get features to add logo on your status bar from this option. Talking about the quick settings, so firstly you get features like header image so when you enable it and click on this tab, you get a lot of QS header presets and now if I select this style and check out my QS panel, the header image gets applied. Moving back, you can also select your own QS header image from your local directory like if I select this image, as you can see it gets applied on my QS panel and you can also control the header image opacity and height from these options. Moving back you can also change the QS element style like right now I have set it on the default which looks boring and now when I select this outline style and check the QS panel the style gets changed. And now if I select this thin line style the QS style gets changed again which looks great to be honest. Moving down you can also customize the QS header and font size from these options and apart from this you can also set a variety of QS page transitions. Now after clicking on the QS customizations tab, you can even change the QS UI whether you want to keep it on the default or Android 11 style. Like if I select the Android 11 style, the QS UI gets themed like the Android 11 QS panel. Moving down, you also get options to hide the QS label, customize the font size and change the number of rows and columns. Moving back, you also get other QS features but I'm not gonna cover them cause the video is gonna get very long. Now moving into the buttons tab you get some customizations for your volume panel like you can change the volume bar style from these options like if I select this style you can see that my volume bar gets changed and apart from this you also get other styles too. Talking about the lock screen features so firstly you can change the screen lock animation like if I select the CRT style and turn off my screen you get this type of animation. Even you also get features for music pulse so when I click on it you can set the pulse lines for your nav bar, lock screen and even the ambient display which displays like this while we play a song. Moving into the power menu features we get features like advanced restart by which we can directly access the recovery and bootloader just from our power menu and by the way you also get this kind of new power menu style which looks really amazing. Talking about the notification features, so you get the edge lightning feature which works absolutely fine for notifications and even you can customize every part of it according to your choice. Talking about the miscellaneous features, so firstly you get a tab for ambient and always on display customization from where you can set custom text on your AOD like if I enable it and set this text and check my AOD it appears like this on my always on display but it doesn't finish here. You can even set custom images for your always on display from this option like if I choose this image and turn off my screen the image appears on my ambient display and that looks lit. 
You also get other features like parallel space or app cloning by which you can use two same apps with different accounts and even you get some spoofing features like unlocking higher pace in games and unlimited photo storage for Google Photos. So yeah, that's all for the main features of this OS and now let's talk about the performance. Talking about the performance, so for the N22, the scores came where 431k which is nice and even for the CPU throttle test, no CPU throttling was detected throughout the whole session and the max dip score came where 232k which is really great. So now if I talk about the gaming performance, it was amazing. So firstly, you get 90fps unlocked for BGMI but for better consistency, I played matches in 60fps settings. So for the TDM matches, I got about 57 to 59 FPS consistently even on heavy sessions and for the classic matches, the FPS were maintained between 55 to 57 FPS, which is good. Now if I talk about 5G, so yes, 5G works fine without any problem. As you can see clearly, the speeds come great. Now if I talk about the battery backup, it's really good. I mean on single charge, I got an average battery backup of about 7 hours on heavy usage and for normal usage, you can consider 8 hours. Now if I talk about my conclusions, so if you are looking for a room with a lot of features and customizations than any other rooms without any bugs, then you should definitely consider this room and for the flashing process, it's same like the other AOSP rooms, just flash through. AOSP recovery and by the way there's also something important to tell you guys that whenever I build this kind of rooms I need to pay for servers for building rooms. So please I need your donations so that I can push regular updates on all these rooms that I'll be maintaining from now on. I mentioned my UPI and PayPal details in the description so make sure to check them out cause it's not easy for me to buy servers every time so please help me as much as you can. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it, share with your friends and most importantly sub to our channel. So goodbye and take care.